Welcome back students. In this demo, we'll be going over a tool called a RAT. This can be an acronym for two different intents, and I'll explain what this means. One of the intents that a RAT stands for is Remote Access Tool, which is essentially a tool used for system and network admins to be able to efficiently and effectively access and manage machines across any environment. So if this means you're a system admin for a company and you need a quick and effective way to manage your staging environments, the Remote Access Tool is a good way of doing so. This type of RAT has no malicious intent. On the other hand, we have the Remote Access Trojan, which is what we want to focus on for this course and your Security Plus exam. So let's take notes. So a Remote Access Trojan has a malicious intent. It's a harmful application or virus that is sent over different forms of communications from an attacker, with the hopeful result of social engineering a victim into installing the RAT. This RAT then allows the attacker to mess with the victim's machine without their knowledge. So you're probably thinking, why would anyone ever want to get into somebody else's computer without their consent? Well, it could be for many different reasons, most popular in cybercrime being for data theft and monetary gain. With all the data that we store on our computers in present day, these attackers can get access to PII data and possibly financial information as well. So you're probably thinking, well, how does this all work? Let me go ahead and give you all a demo. So over here, we have two computers on the screen, one being the attacker machine and one being the victim machine. So let's go ahead and go over what the attacker has and what the victim is going to do. So on the attacker, we have a folder over here, as you can notice, Quasar 1.4.0. So what is Quasar? Quasar is an open source remote access Trojan and a remote access tool, which allows attackers or system admins to be able to access other machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Quasar folder and you can see here there's a bunch of different files. I'm going to open up the file that says quasar.exe. This is the application where the actual rat is stored. You can see here we have now opened up a dialog. I'm going to go ahead and close out the folder. You can see it has IP address, tag, username, version, status. This is the list of where all the clients that are connected to our rat will be stored. So let's go ahead and send over our malicious virus application to our victim machine. So if you look over back at our desktop, we have a folder called the victim client. If I double click this, you'll see we have an exe called the office04.exe. This is a virus or rat that is basically being masked by an office installer or updater, which we're gonna send to our victim to hopefully install. So how do we send this over to our victim conspicuously? We can go ahead and open up the mail client that I have down here on the taskbar. You can see here we have our email. I'm gonna also open up the victim's email on the right. I kept them different colors to easily tell them apart. On the attacker's machine, we're gonna go ahead and click on new email, and we're gonna send this email to the victim. So if we type in victim, we're gonna click the first email that it gives us, and on the subject, we're gonna type in office updater. And in the description, we're also gonna put no key required. Obviously, in the real world, it'll be a lot more convincing, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and upload the attachment to this very simple email. So if I click on office04.exe, obviously we know this is our rat. So if you click on open, you can see it attaches it to the email. Let's go ahead. And before we click on send, I recommend this email tracking application called MailSpring, which allows attackers to be able to track when their emails are opened and when their attachments are downloaded. So you can see here down here, we have link tracking and we have open tracking. This allows us to find out when our victim actually opens up our email. So if we click on send, in a few seconds, you can see the timer counts down before it sends it. Two, one, and there we go. If you look over at our application over here, you can see in a few seconds, we're gonna see an email pop up. There you go, from the attacker machine. Obviously, it won't say attacker machine or victim. It'll be from user A to user B, obviously like a real life example. So if I open up this email, you can see it says, this is an email called Office Updater. But wait, look at the left. You can see that the attacker gained a notification. And now you can see on the right, now that we've opened up the email, it says office04.exe, no key required. So let's go ahead and download this exe file. And you can see it's gonna ask us where do we wanna save it. Let's go to our desktop, let's click on save. There we go, we've now transferred the exe from the attacker's machine to the victim machine. So the victim has no idea this is a virus yet. So we're gonna go ahead and run that executable file. So if we close out the victim's email and we close out the actual client, we can see on the desktop, we now have office04.exe. So before we open this, let me go ahead and close out the attacker's email client as well. And let's go back to our Quasar server. So 
A rat needs two things, one being the server and one being the client. The client connects to the server in order for the attacker to actually do commands or execute things on the victim machine. So here, this is our server. You can see at the bottom left, it says listening on port 4782. It's basically listening on the entire network over that port waiting for a client to connect. So if I double click on this office 04.exe, you can see on the victim machine, it opens up nothing. Nothing happened on the victim machine. But if we wait a few seconds on our attacker machine, we give it a few seconds, boom, right there, we got a notification, client connected from United States has the IP address in the operating system. So that lets us know that somebody actually connected. And if we look in our list, we have our victim machine that's connected to our attacker machine. And now look, on the victim machine, they have zero suspicion that anything happened on this desktop. So what are we gonna do now? We can look at the attacker machine and we can see the list. If we right click on this machine, you can see all this stuff that we can do to this machine. And this machine has no idea that it's happening. Let's go ahead and go over to the user support section. On the user support section, there's many different options, one being show message box, remote desktop, and send to website. We're gonna go ahead and go with show message box. Here you're gonna see it's gonna ask for the caption and the text that we wanna to send to the victim. For example, we're gonna go ahead and say, you have been hacked. And there we go. If we click on the message box icon, let's click on asterisk as the icon and click on send. You can see on the victim machine, I haven't done anything. And you can see here, it says you have been hacked. Obviously any hacker in the right mind won't let the victim know that they've been hacked, but just to see that this is properly working, we can see we sent a command from our server to our client and you can see that the victim has indeed been compromised. So if you go back over to our server, we can right click on this victim, click on administration and click on remote shell. And you can see here, it opened up a whole command prompt that's actually controlling the victim machine. And I'll prove this to you. We can all agree that on the victim machine, there is no applications that are currently open. But what if I told you I could open up Chrome without the victim having to do anything? On the attacker, I can type start chrome.exe. And if I click on enter, you can see on the victim machine in a few seconds, it's gonna automatically open up Chrome. There you go. I didn't touch it, it did it itself. So what if we wanted to kill Chrome? On the shell, we can also type task kill slash F for force slash IM for immediately. And then we type chrome.exe. And boom, right there, just disappeared instantly. It terminated all the processes. So let's go ahead and clear our terminal. And let's go ahead and do some other things. What if we wanted to blank out the victim's entire screen so they have no control over their computer so we can mess with it? This is a common thing in tech support scams where remote scammers will be able to automatically turn off their display so they can get their personal information and financial information. So let's go ahead and type in task kill slash force slash immediately and then type in explorer.exe. So before I click enter, explorer.exe is basically the overall GUI of Windows. It's basically what makes your desktop and everything work. So if I actually click on enter, you can see instantly the screen goes completely blank with the blue color. This victim machine can't do anything. Look, I'm on it. You can't do anything on this computer. It's completely dead. So now the attacker can actually run commands in the background, like opening up Chrome or trying to grab passwords from Chrome, extract their data, log files, all those kinds of things. And the victim has no control. The only thing they can do is turn off their computer, which some people get panic attacks and they won't be, they won't think about doing that. So let's go ahead and start our explorer again. Start explorer.exe. And you can see, there we go. The machine that they had is now back. So let's assume we did none of this and we're trying to actually do some real damage to their computer. Let's go ahead and show the other stuff that you can do. So if you go ahead and right click on this machine and we go to the monitoring section, we can see here that there's three different things, password recovery, keylogger, and remote desktop. We're gonna go in and click on remote desktop. So obviously the attacker doesn't know what the victim machine looks like. All he knows is that they connected to his machine. So if we go ahead and click on start, you can see we can get a live display of what's happening on that victim machine. So if I start highlighting things over here, you can see on the attacker machine, it's updating in that little display window. Now what's even scarier is that the attacker can take control of the victim machine. But how does it do it? If we go back over to our attacker machine over here, and we click on these two icons. You can see currently they're disabled, but if I enable mouse and I enable keyboard, you can see on the left, I can actually control what's happening from the attacker machine. I can literally make a new folder and I can call it test, test. 
enter. And you can see it's updating it on the right. So if I go ahead and delete this, it'll delete it on the victim machine as well. So this is one of the ways that we can use remote desktop through RAT to actually cause harm or do potentially good things, just like how I said the remote access tool. So let's go ahead and stop this remote desktop. And let's look at one last thing. If we right click on the machine again, we're gonna go ahead and go down to where it says administration. And we're gonna click on the part where it says file manager. If you click on file manager, this is the coolest part. Imagine on your own computer, you're the victim and you have your IRS information, you have your SSN documents. You do not want anybody getting that information. But if an attacker has this installed on the victim's computer, they can simply navigate to their desktop or wherever they keep their files. So for example, I'm gonna go into the victim user and I'm gonna to go to the desktop. And if there was anything on here, I could essentially just grab all the information that was there. Automatically, I could right click on it, whatever file it was, download. And now there's actually one other thing called upload. So I'm gonna show you how I can upload another virus that could potentially do even more harm to the victim machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and I'm gonna click on upload. It's gonna ask me to choose the file that I wanna upload. On my desktop, I have this folder called cool tools. If I open it up, you can see it has a batch file called OpenCMD. It's simply a batch file that just opens a bunch of command prompts just to screw with the victim. So if I double click on this batch file, you can see in a few seconds on the victim machine, we can see it popped up over here. And to verify it did, we're gonna right click on the attacker and we're gonna go ahead and click on refresh. And you can see now it showed up. So we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and we're gonna click on execute. And you can see on the victim machine instantly a bunch of these command prompts that could potentially scare somebody are all of a sudden opening. And this just shows how powerful it is downloading, uploading, and executing files from machine to machine. And YA RAT is one of the most common ways that attackers get into victim machines and steal data. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and I hope you understood this concept and I hope to see you on the next demo.